A Thing of Beauty is a Joy Forever by John Keats is taken from a poem Endymion based on Greek mythology. The important thing that the poet tells us is that beautiful things give eternal pleasure and can change our lives. Beauty lies everywhere and in everything. That is why beauty is a source of continuous joy and it never fades or passes into nothingness. Hello everyone. This is your host Poonam Thakur from English Tutorials by Poonam Thakur. In this video, I will be discussing poetic devices used in the poem A Thing of Beauty is Joy Forever. Poetic devices play a very important role in any poem. In this poem also, we have quite a number of poetic devices which I have highlighted in different colors and I will be explaining them one by one after the recitation of the poem. Let's get started. A thing of beauty is a joy forever. Its loveliness increases. It will never pass into nothingness, but will keep our bower quiet for us and a sleep full of sweet dreams and health and quiet breathing. Therefore, on every morrow, are we reading a flowery band to bind us to the earth? spite of discordance of the inhuman dearth of noble natures of the gloomy days of all the unhealthy and over darkened ways made for our searching yes in spite of all some shape of beauty moves away the pall from our dark spirits such the sun the moon trees old and young sprouting a shady boon for simple sheep and such are daffodils with the green world they live in and clear rills that for themselves a cooling covert make against the hot season the mid forest break rich with a sprinkling of fair musk rose blooms and such too is the grandeur of the dooms we have imagined for the mighty dead all lovely tales that we have heard or read an endless fountain of a mortal drink pouring unto us from the heavens brink let's begin with rhyme scheme what is rhyme scheme the pattern of sounds that repeats at the end of a line or stanza in a poem is called a rhyme scheme letters like a b c are usually used to express which lines rhyme verses that are designated with the same letter are said to rhyme with each other rhyme schemes can change line by line stanza by stanza or can continue throughout a poem John Keats casts a lyrical spell with the perfect rhyme scheme of A A B B that is the poem is written in rhyming couplets a couplet usually consists of two successive lines that rhyme and have the same meter for example forever never keep sleep breathing reading earth dearth children if you notice the same pattern of sounds is repeating at the end of every line so a thing of beauty is a perfect example of rhyming couplets next we have metaphor and what is a metaphor a metaphor is a figure of speech that is used to make a comparison between two things that aren't alike but do have something in common unlike a simile where two things are compared directly using like or as a metaphor's comparison is more indirect it is implied simile the poet has made liberal use of metaphors in the poem the list of beautiful things themselves are metaphors and symbols for beauty a bower quiet refers to a quiet shady place under the trees here calmness of the bower is compared to the calming effect of a beautiful things on us for the poet beauty is like a pleasant shady place under trees 
under whose shade all the creatures can sleep peacefully and enjoy good health all these beautiful things gives us shelter when times are hard next we have a sleep full of sweet dreams sweet dreams means happy dreams the whole poem talks about how beautiful things make our lives better they provides us a peaceful shelter and a sleep made comfortable by many sweet dreams so sweet dreams is a metaphor so here beauty is like a sleep full of happy and pleasant dreams these beautiful things keep our lives free from turmoils next metaphor we have is reading a flowery band which means that beautiful things around us bind us to the mother earth the flowery band is a metaphor for earthly beauty which is mesmerizing as we know the link of man with nature is eternal the things of beauty are like wreaths of beautiful flowers we seem to weave a flowery band every day it keeps us attached to the beauties of this earth the poet wants to say that all the beautiful things are like strings of flowers around us that gives meaning to our lives next metaphor is some shape of beauty moves away the pall the pall is a thick dark cloud of sadness and hopelessness so poet says that our unhealthy and evil ways give rise to troubles and sufferings they depress our spirits they are like a pall of sadness over our lives they are like dark clouds of negative thoughts which overpower our good thoughts so a thing of beauty be it in any form removes that pall of sadness and sufferings from our lives it makes human beings love life a thing of beauty has a soothing effect and elevates our spirits it can be compared to the temporary shift in our mood where we appreciate beauty around us and we feel happy relaxed and motivated another beautiful metaphor used by the poet is an endless fountain of immortal drink the fountain in heaven is a metaphor for the source of spiritual beauty it's an indirect comparison between lovely stories that we have heard or read to an endless fountain of immortal drink poet says a beauty is a perennial source of motivation and inspiration the stories of mighty dead are like an elixir of life a never diminishing source of pleasure and delight an endless fountain of joy that seems to be a precious gift from the heaven the best thing about beautiful things is that they help us to relax and give a deep sense of satisfaction even the toughest of times that's why poet says that they are like endless gifts that pour down like nectar from heaven and make the beholder happy next we have alliteration what is alliteration it is the repetition of same consonant sounds at the beginning of neighboring or closely connected words let's check out the examples used in the poem in the line of noble natures of the gloomy days consonant sound n is repeated we can also notice the use of alliteration in the line a flowery band to bind us to the earth where consonant sound b in the words band and bind is repeated repetition of the consonant sound s is also noticed in the line some shape of beauty and in simple sheep the sound of c pops out in the line that for themselves a cooling covert where c sound is quite clear in cooling covert we can also hear the repetition of the consonant sound of the letter h in the line all lovely tales that we have heard imagery is a literary device that refers to the use of figurative language to evoke a sensory experience or create a picture with words for a reader by utilizing effective descriptive language and imagery the poet appeal to a reader's senses of sight taste smell touch and sound as well as internal emotion and feelings therefore 
imagery is not limited to visual representation or mental images but also includes physical sensations and internal emotions the poem contains a powerful image of the earthly beauty in the lines are we reading a flowery band to bind us to the earth this is an image that creates a picture of the universal beauty a band which keeps our bond with nature constant and unbroken a thing of beauty is full of sensory images and one can almost feel and smell them these include shady boon that is trees giving shade which creates a sense of comfort and respite on a hot summer afternoon and so does the description of the daffodils that spread beauty and charm in the green world where they are growing the lush green surroundings of meadows and pastures the pretty flowers like daffodils make the world green and lively Similarly clear rills that a cooling covert make the small and clear streams of water provide cooling shelter to give respite during the hot summer season the description of the sprinkling of fair musk rose blooms in the middle of a clearing in the forest provides a rich feast of colors for the eyes and sweet fragrance mesmerizes us you will agree with me children that the memory of a beautiful visual scene leaves a lasting impression on us and has a soothing effect on our soul and in the last three lines of the poem the poet john keats has again used beautiful imagery such too is the grandeur of dooms an endless fountain of eternal drink pouring unto us from the heavens brink he says that the stories of the brave warriors who laid their lives to protect their people are beautiful and inspiring these beautiful things are like a fountain of immortality bestowed upon us by god they inspire us to live on and maintain our faith in goodness endless fountain of joy is the image that has been used to convey that beauty is everlasting things of beauty are an eternal source of motivation a precious gift from heaven which gives us infinite pleasure and delight the poet john keats uses various images to describe the beautiful bounties of the earth the bounty of the earth is like an endless fountain and is the greatest gift of god which has been showered upon us from the heavens above into our hearts next we have transferred epithet and what is transferred epithet so the transferred epithet is when an adjective usually used to describe one thing is transferred to another in other words the modifier or epithet is transferred from the noun it is meant to describe to another noun in the sentence let's check out the examples of transferred epithet in the poem of noble natures of the gloomy days as we know days cannot be gloomy or sad or depressing it's our experience or our thoughts which are sad so when we are sad the whole day seems to be sad or gloomy so epithet gloomy is transferred to down days next one is of all the unhealthy and over darkened ways so children ways are not unhealthy or evil it's our negative thoughts or actions which are unhealthy harmful dark and evil the epithet unhealthy and over darkened is transferred to the down ways and the line an endless fountain of immortal drink the epithet immortal is transferred from the fountain to the drink so it's also an example of transferred epithet next we have inversion inversion is a term used to refer to the inverting of the normal word order in a sentence or a phrase writers use inversion to maintain a particular meter or rhyme scheme in a poetry or to emphasize a specific word in prose in line 
are we reading a flowery band the normal order of words is reversed instead of writing we are reading a flowery band poet has written are we reading and it's not a question but for poetic emphasis he has used the technique inversion over here poet has used antithesis in the poem and what is antithesis it literally means opposite it is a rhetorical device in which two opposite ideas are put together in a sentence to achieve a contrasting effect an example of antithesis from the poem is trees old and young as contrasting ideas such as old and young are used in the same line so it's an example of antithesis where two opposite words are put together in a same line the term anaphora refers to a poetic technique in which successive phrases or lines begin with the same words the repetition can be as simple as a single word or as long as an entire phrase now you know that anaphora is a repetition of the same word or phrase in the beginning of the two consecutive lines look at these lines of noble natures of the gloomy days of all the unhealthy and over darkened ways here you can see the repetition of the word of in two consecutive lines so it is an example of anaphora let me tell you about symbolism first symbolism refers to the use of an object figure event situation or an idea to represent something else typically it has a deeper meaning that differs from its factual meaning the things used for symbolism are called symbols keats has made special reference to the sheep as symbol of divine beauty he has given example of biblical allusion here sheep are envisioned as symbol of innocence and divine beauty in other words simple sheep refers to mankind as christ is considered the shepherd who leads human souls out of the dark world of sins and temptations trees old and young sprouting a shady boon the poet sees the trees be it young or old as a symbol of protection nature through these trees shower on us the blessing of shades to protect us from tormenting heat of the sun and from rain next we have oxymoron an oxymoron is a figure of speech containing words that seem to contradict each other in the line the grandeur of the doves we have imagined for the mighty dead here mighty dead is oxymoron the mighty dead are legendary people who have left behind inspiring deeds and admirable sagas that inspire and enthuse us through generations their exemplary achievements have immortalized them in history and thus glory and grandeur is associated with mighty dead the poet says that those who sacrifice their lives are an inspiration for us forever so how can they be dead dead is something that is over forgotten but the beautiful legacy of their bravery is always going to be alive till eternity therefore mighty dead is oxymoron where two contradictory words are used together next we have enjambment in poetry enjambment means moving over from one line to another without terminating punctuation mark the meaning runs over from one poetic line to the next without terminal punctuation let's check out the examples of enjambment a thing of beauty is a joy forever its loveliness increases it will never pass into nothingness but still will keep a bower quite for us and sleep full of sweet dreams and health and quiet breathing as you can see first four lines are incomplete the poet continues them in the next line making it a classic example of enjambment the continuation of the sentence beyond the end of a line 
is used in the poem through the words reading a flowery band that's line 6 and 7 in human dearth of noble natures line 8 and 9 the pall from our spirits line number 12 and 13 shady boon to that for themselves that's line 14 to 17 and dooms we have line number 20 in these lines meaning runs over from one poetic line to the next without terminal punctuation next we have epigram an epigram is a brief interesting memorable and sometimes surprising statement or remark expressing an idea in a clever and amusing way the line a thing of beauty is a joy forever is a pithy saying expressing the idea of beauty in a clever way the important thing that the poet tells us is that beautiful things last forever and give us immense happiness next we have hyperbole it is a figure of speech in which an author or speaker purposely exaggerates an idea for the sake of emphasis or as a way of making a description more creative in the line an endless fountain of immortal drink endless fountain is an exaggerated statement that stories which we have read or heard about the warriors are an endless fountain of immortal drink and they are everlasting similarly the beauty of nature is also considered to be perennial everlasting so you can see children it is an exaggeration as it's been referred as endless fountain which is never going to end next we have consonants consonants is a figure of speech in which the same consonant sound repeats within a group of words phrase or a short sentence it occurs when sounds not letters repeat so now you know that consonants is the repetition of a consonant sounds in the same line such as the letter b in the line a flowery band to bind in line for simple sheep and such are the daffodils consonant sounds s is repeated with the green world they live in the sound is repeated in the line all the lovely tales that we have heard letter l and sound l is repeated an endless fountain of immortal drink consonant sound n is repeated next we have assonance assonance is a figure of speech in which the same vowel sound repeats within a group of words such as the sound i in its loveliness increases it will never pass into nothingness in a bower quite for us and asleep sound a is repeating in line of noble natures of the gloomy days vowel sound o is repeating and, and such too is the grandeur of the dooms sound u is repeating so children these are some of the many examples of assonance in the poem next we have personification when an idea or thing is given human attributes or feelings or is spoken of as if it were human it's known as personification some shape of beauty moving away the pall here beauty is given the human quality of moving away the pall hence personification dear students i hope you have understood the poem thoroughly and your doubts are clear now In case of any doubts please feel free to drop a comment and I will get back to you. Thank you so much for watching right till the end. Don't forget to press the subscribe button and the bell icon next to it. See you soon. Happy watching. English tutorials by Poonam Thakur.